Hey guys, how are you today? This is Wednesday of week four and April the 29th. That's the last week of April. So here we are with our sight words this m today. And I've got some of them up here already, but I ran out of letters. So maybe you can help me out here. Our first word, S-H-O-U-L-D. The word is should. Say it with me, should. Let's spell it together. S-H-O-U-L-D. What's the word? You say it. Should. Good job. Let's go to the second word. Spell it with me. S-O-R-R-Y. The word is sorry. And you say the word sorry. Good job. Our third word is above. Above. Spell it with me. A B O V E. What's the word? Above. Good job. Okay, the next word is enough. Okay, spell it with me. E N O U G H. What's the word? Enough. Thank you. Okay, the next word, this is where we ran out of letters. So I'm going to have to take a few and put them down here. This next word is lived. Say it with me. Lived. Let's spell it. L-I-V-E-D. What's the word? Lived. Good job. The next word, we will need another L. O V E V. Okay, so this word is loved. Repeat, spell it together L O V E D. What's the word? Loved. Good job. Our next word is up here. It's ready to go. And this word is want. Repeat. Want. Let's spell it. W-A-N-T. What's the word? Want. Good job. Okay, the next word is falling. And I'm missing quite a few letters. And this is a very long word. So we need F. A, give us plenty of room here, F-A-L, and it has another L, F-A-L-L -L spells fall, ing, I-N-G, so say the word with me, falling, let's spell it. F-A-L-L-I-N-G, falling. Good job. Our next word is while. W-H-I, need another L again. L-E, while. Okay, let's spell this together. W-H-I-L-E. The word is while. Good job. One more word. And it has happened. And we again, we need a lot of space. This is a big word. Long word. Okay. Happened. You probably know that the first letter is H. A. A. Hap, P, P, E, N, another E, and a D. Okay, happened. H, spell it with me. H-A-P-P-E-N-E-D. What's the word? Happened. 
Good job. So that's all of our sight words for now. So then I'm going to go ahead and go over our close reader. Today you have um, two pages is all, 34 and 35. You have a poem to read today called Weather by Eve Merriman. Please check the background information, setting a purpose on 34. Go over to 35. You will read the story about weather, a poem about weather. Come back up here, circle some words and phrases that repeat. And don't let those repetitions mess you up because it just about did with when I was reading it. After you've read the story, you circled those words and phrases. Down at the bottom, it says short response. Reread the poem. What details make the poem sound like rain falling? And I thought, falling? We just had that word as a sight word. So there's a sight word today, falling. Write your answer below. So you will read both pages here and just follow along with the directions. And I hope you enjoy the repetition of the poem today. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to review about our um, complete sentences and not complete sentences. So we talked about Monday, and we've been talking about the last couple weeks. Sentences have a subject, a noun, which can name a person, place, or thing, or animal. And that is who or what we're talking about in the sentence. It also needs a predicate that tells us the verb. What's going on? What is that person or thing doing? And that makes a complete sentence when we have both of those. It gives us a complete thought. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we have a short activity here. And this says, whoops, I need some space here. This just says, which ones are the complete sentences? So I've written down some, some complete sentences and I've written down some incomplete sentences. Let's see how well you are reading today and understanding what we're doing. The first one, I'm just going to read all of these and I want you to get an idea and say, oh, one is or isn't a complete sentence. And then when I'm finish reading all six, we'll go back over and see how you did. Okay, so number one says, my best friend, Sarah. So think about that. Does it have everything it needs? Remember, a subject and a predicate. Number two, math is the best subject. Math is the best subject. Number three, Mom told me to read my story. Mom told me to read my story. Let's go on up here. We'll just put number four right here so we can see it up high. And then we'll go back. Okay, this one is, can sometimes be tricky can sometimes be tricky. Think about that one. Does it have a subject? Who are we talking about? What are we talking about? And a predicate. What are they doing? Okay, number five. The weather cools down in the fall. The weather cools down in the fall. Okay, does that have a complete sentence? Does it have the subject and the predicate? Okay, number six, reads chapter books, reads chapter books. Okay, well, we're going to go back and see how well you did. Okay, number one, my best friend, Sarah. Is there a noun there? Who are we talking about? Sarah. Sarah. My best friend, right? Okay, so the subject's there. Is the predicate there? My best friend, Sarah. There's nothing else after that. 
So this one is missing our predicate. It's telling us, well, what about Sarah? Okay, so we could add something. My best friend Sarah spent the night with me or is in my classroom. Okay, so it's incomplete. Number two, math is the best subject. Do we have a noun? What are we talking about? We're talking about math, right? Math is the best subject. So math is our noun. Our predicate is the rest of it. Is the best subject. So math is the best subject. So yes, that has a subject, math, and a predicate. Is the best subject. Number three, mom told me to read my story. Okay, who are we talking about? Talking about mom, right? What about mom? What did mom do? Told. She told me to read my story. So that is complete. So we have number two is complete. And number three, both of those are complete. Let's see if we can find some more. I'm going to move this up so make sure we all can see it. Okay, number four can sometimes be tricky. Okay, is there a subject? What can sometimes be tricky? No, there's not a subject there. We could say math can sometimes be tricky or reading a poem can sometimes be tricky as your poem might be today. So it doesn't have a subject. Can sometimes be tricky is our predicate. It's telling us something about the noun. We just needed the noun to go with that. Okay, is that the one you chose that was incomplete? Number five, the weather cools down in the fall. What's our subject? Weather, okay, the weather. What does the weather do? Predicate, cools down in the fall. Okay, so number five is a complete sentence. One more, number six is reads chapter books. Reads chapter books. Well, reads is a verb, isn't it? You sit down, you read a book, we're reading these sentences reads chapter books. So who is doing the reading? Mrs. Simpson reads chapter books. My mom reads chapter books. I read chapter books. So this one is missing. This one is missing the subject. Okay, this one is missing the subject again. And number one up here, my best friend, Sarah, we need the predicate. We need to know something about our best friend, Sarah. Okay, and those other two were complete. So don't let sentences or part of sentences fool you. Okay, so as you're reading the story today, or if you are reading just a book that you have at home, pay attention as you're reading those sentences. Who are, you, who are you reading about? What are they doing? And as you do, I think you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of that. So that's our lesson today for Wednesday. So good to see you guys. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Tomorrow on Thursday, you can read your Scholastic at home for your reading. And if you don't have time to do that at home, no problem. Those are just some extra activities that if you're just bored and you need something else to do, then you can do that as well. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. See you on Friday.